How's it going, everybody? Let's continue on in Mark 12. <sighs> and the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none but he. And to love him with all thy heart, with all thy understanding, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God, and no man have that durst ask him any question. Sorry, I got some in my mouth. Realizing how much the man understood, Jesus said unto him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Whose son is the Messiah? Later, as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple, he asked, Why do teachers of religious law claim that the Messiah is the son of David? For David himself said, speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, The Lord hath said to my Lord, Sit in the place of the honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies beneath your feet. Since David himself called the Messiah, my Lord, how can the Messiah be his son? The large crowd listened to him with great delight. Jesus also taught, beware of these teachers of religious law. Now, this is the same as today, by the way. For they like to parade around flowing robes, not robes, suit and ties, Casual, receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces or walk around town or social media and how they love the seats of the honor in the synagogues in the head of the tables of the banquets. So, and we know that in today's churches, you're not getting the truth and that these men are of the world. They're not of truth. They teach free will, celebrate Christmas and Easter. They sell it all. They are. Catholics, They're just offshoots of Catholicism. You don't get the truth anywhere today, but right here. So we're glad you're here. Surely there's other websites that tell the truth. No, we can't find any. Well, what about uh, Jim Brown at Grace and Truth Ministries? He teaches election and predestination. Yes, but Jim Brown <laughs> at Grace and Truth Ministries. Jim Brown, Grace and Truth Ministries. Excellent. With election. The New Testament was written. A See what he says. Original text was written in the Greek. You look back here. So Jim Brown at Grace and Truth Ministries teaches very well. Go in. You know, we can only do this on a PC. It doesn't work on a cell phone, but you key in like election. Predestination. And you see these up in the 3000s. Well, you go down to like where it's just 585, for instance, when he's young, and you're going to get some strong. That's his best teachings on election. I found him when the Lord showed me the truth. I was like, is anybody else teaching it? Here's 685, another young Jim, a younger Jim Brown. Um, here's 625. And that's what you want, but just keep it to election predestination. He doesn't understand the end times. He doesn't understand demons. He doesn't understand hell. Hell is not eternal torment. It's judgment. It's the grave. And we're going to get into that today. We're going to get into our final judgment. Anyway, you're getting the truth here better than anywhere else we can find anywhere on the internet. So we're glad you're here. Welcome to the end times. We're waiting on one event for the Antichrist, Trump, horn, horn, Trump. Jesus said he would be here in his own name. A horn is a Trump. A Trump is a horn. The horn of Daniel 7 was the Antichrist. Jesus said, I come in my father's name and you receive me not. But if one shall come in his own name, him he will receive horn and trumps. They're both trumpets. He is here in his own name and 666 comes to his name. And his name comes to 666, but the last name of Drumpf, which was the family surname before it was changed, he is, in fact, a Drumpf to fulfill that prophecy and a Trump to fulfill the other prophecy. And shall go out. So now Satan is loosed, okay? 
out of the, after the thousand year millennial reign and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and gather them together to the great battle for whom the number of the, the let me see, to gather them together to battle, it's early, y'all, the number of whom is the sand of the sea. So this is every goat and every fallen angel that was ever created is now surrounding where Jesus and his sheep have just spent the thousand year millennial kingdom that we read about earlier. And it says, and it's going to tell you here again, and they went up on the breedeth of the earth. So in a very supernatural way, they are surrounding it says and encompass the camp of the saints about the beloved city so they are surrounding israel in jerusalem kind of in a supernatural transformative sense they're able the lord has put this together and it says and fire came down from god out of heaven and devoured them so that's it there is no war gog and magog is um you know, and it's called the great battle, wasn't it? Yeah, to battle. Well, how much of a battle was that? <laughs> that was it. And God came down, and that's judgment. And that's where the weeping and gnashing of teeth is, that was that we spoke about yesterday. There shall be weeping. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when we see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom. And you yourselves, of course, thrust out. <clears throat> there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when and where? When you encompass the camp of the saints of the Most High in the beloved city. When you shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jake, but all the prophets in the kingdom of God. When is that? Uh, when they, you encompass the camp of the saints of the be beloved city, that's the kingdom. That's the earthly kingdom. You don't really think that they encompass the camp of the saints in the kingdom of the new Jerusalem because God's already wiped away all our tears. Why does God have to wipe away all our tears? Because we saw all goats that we knew standing there weeping and gnashing their teeth and they see that god loved us and they see that they were not loved there is no free will god doesn't love everybody the hippie jesus is a false teaching the whole bible is cryptically written to wear these wolves and sheep's clothing in the 1500 king's english that was which they then used the textus receptus which was written by the catholic erasmus the bible was cryptically written by erasmus a humanist and then the half catholics of the king james and the other half were protestants that believed in election and predestination um it was cryptically written enough to where that could be easily twisted. And that's because Jesus spoke in parables and Jesus is the word. So the word is a parable. That's why we go over this verse by verse to give you the truth of what it's actually saying in the spiritual sense. We know that the truth in God's word is only understood spiritually. That's 1 Corinthians 2.14. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because it's spiritually discerned. So we spiritually take you through the true discernment of each verse in the Bible. You can't get this anywhere else. Praise the Lord for that. I'm humbled by that. And you should be too, because you're here. It's not about me. It's about us. It's about the church. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. These are the fallen angels. And you're like, well, it's talking about the beast and the false prophet. They're humans. Not anymore. 
when they possessed the body, the human host died off. And it was the demonic spirit, kind of like the movie The Exorcist or Venom, where the human host was dying off. That's how the that's what the mark of the beast is. The human host will die off. I'm running out of time and I gotta get to work. So let's just keep going here. And, the, and so it's the demonic realm that's gonna be tormented day and night forever and ever. Humans don't have eternal life unless it's unless they're sheep and they're living with the Lord. Um, as you just saw, they were devoured and fire came down and devoured them. They're dead. And that's the second death. And I saw a great white throne of him that sat on him, whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So you got sheep and goats. And the dead, well, when were they dead? Uh, up here where they were devoured, <laughs> they're dead. Um, so there's no eternal torment for goats. If God never knew you, if he never loved you, if he never came for you and came inside of you and started turning you away from the world. And again, most of the world won't get turned now here at the end times until the abomination of desolation. The sea gave up the dead, which were in it death and hell. Hell means the grave death and the grave delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works but as they're being judged what they're already dead they're dead when were they killed uh when the fire came down and devoured them so their dead bodies are being judged now and death and the grave are cast into the lake of fire that's where the fire is but they're already dead see and this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire i love you very much ask questions anytime that's what i'm here for